I'm constantly getting asked, gold money prices, is my coin rare? How do I know how much money my coin is worth? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you some coins that depending on where you're at in your financial situation, you could potentially retire if you found one of these coins. So let's just hop right into this video. Now look at this coin right here. It's important to know that Washington quarters, when it comes to the value of these coins, it typically comes down to the condition, the date, how many were produced, the scarcity, and market demands at the time that these coins were sold. The first thing you notice on this coin is the fact that it has a lot of different colors on it. This is what collectors call toning. Now toning is a naturally occurring oxidation process where the metals will react with the air and change the color of the coin. It's important to know that toning can either decrease or increase the value of the coin depending on its eye appeal. There are some tonings out there that look less desirable, causing people to not want them as much, while on the other hand, there's some tonings that are really pretty and people want to obtain them. What you need to know that is if your coin is toned, it only really matters if the coin is uncirculated for the most part, especially with the 1932 quarters. Now, 1932 was the first year they ever produced the Washington quarter. So even in a lower graded condition, the coin's going to be worth a lot more money than 25 cents. Now, this coin in particular graded by PCGS, a mint state 67, and it sold for $40,250. Now, really quick, it's important to know that the two best best grading companies are either PCGS or NGC. The highest obtainable grade by these companies is 70. It's really hard to obtain a high grade on a coin, so make sure that you know how to grade your coins before you send them off to grading. Now, I have a completely free ebook that goes over coin handling, grading, and values. You can just click the link below, but you don't have to do that. What you should do is do your homework and due diligence before spending money on getting your coins graded because there is a bit of risk involved with that. This coin's over $2 million $585,000. I just wanted to show this coin really quick. This is something that could be found in a garage sale or your parents' attic or basement. Who knows? But something like this is incredibly rare. Now let's hop into the next coin. Wait, 90% of you that watch the videos are still not subscribed. So you better subscribe right now so we can keep the lights on. Wait, wait, no, I was kidding. I was kidding. This coin sold for $456,000 and this is why. Now this is a coin that I get approached about quite often because people think that they have this coin, when in reality, they have a coin that is worth nowhere near this amount. So what do you need to know to see if you have this coin that's worth a lot of money? So this is a 1975 10 cent Roosevelt dime graded by PCGS, a proof 68. Now the area you want to look out for on this coin is to see if there is no S around the date there. So this coin in particular should have had an S mint mark standing for the San Francisco mint. This is considered to be an error. Now the difficult part to understand about these coins is that 1975 Roosevelt dimes were also issued at Philadelphia. Now, Philadelphia minted coins do not have a mint mark, so they look very similar to this coin that sold for a lot of money. The difference is, guys, listen to this. So this coin you see on the screen right now is a proof coin. Now, proof coins are different than regularly issued coins because proof coins have a shiny, lustrous appearance where it almost looks like you're looking into a mirror. Where it gets more tricky, again, is if someone takes a normal Philadelphia coin coin that is not a proof coin and they polish it or clean it to make it look like a proof coin. So overall, what you need to know is that if you have a genuine proof coin from 1975, it's a Roosevelt dime and there's no S mint mark, but there should be, you've come across a coin that's worth a lot of money because again, this one sold for $456,000. Not going to spend too much time on this Jefferson nickel, but this 1942 coin graded by PCGS, a mint state 65. The biggest area you want to look at on this coin is on the back right hand side of the coin, you're going to see a small little D mint mark. Now you're going to need some sort of magnification to zoom in on this area because this is a D over D coin. And now this is considered to be a variety. This happened during the minting process where the hub accidentally had a what collectors call a horizontal D over D. That in combination with the full steps on the back of the coin right in the center there above Monticello, you'll see the full steps. Now those full steps only really matter on uncirculated mint state conditions coins. If your coin is beat up in a low grade condition, the full steps don't matter as much, but they do matter on high graded coins because this is the highest point on the coin and the hardest area to strike clearly. All these things combined at the mint state grade of a 65 allowed this coin to sell for $28,200. This coin sold for $126,500 and this is why. So this is a 1969 S one cent coin graded by PCGS in mint state 64 red. Now, when 
I say red, I mean these coins get a designation of either red, red brown, or brown, depending on the color of the coin. Now it's important to know that when these coins are first produced, they are all red coins. The closer the coin looks to its mint state condition, the better. So over time, these coins can turn from red to brown. Now, not always are brown coins worth less than the red variety, but generally speaking, if your coin is red, it will be worth more money than a brown coin. Red coins have better eye appeal. They look nicer and people would rather collect them because they look brand new. So the thing you want to look out for here is the fact that this is considered to be a doubled die obverse coin. Now obverse means the front of the coin, reverse means back of the coin. So if you look at the motto at the top, liberty at the left, and the day at the bottom right there, you'll see what is called doubling. Now doubling happens during the minting process where the hub will get doubled, causing a run of coins to have this doubling. Now this happened to quite a few of these coins, so 1969 is well known to have this doubling error on it. Keep your eyes peeled for this double die obverse coin because it sold for $126,500. This coin sold for $408,000 and here's why. This is a 1944S one cent coin struck on a zinc coated steel planchet graded by PCGS a mint state 66 with a CAC sticker. Let's get some things out of the way first. So what is a CAC sticker? So after you get your coin graded, if it's valuable and rare, you can send your coin off to a company called CAC. You can pay them a small fee and they will consider putting their sticker on your holder. Now this sticker may seem pretty trivial and not that big of a deal, but this one little thing can increase the value of your coin significantly. If CAC thinks your coin is nice or they think it's undergraded, they will put the sticker on the holder and that will increase the value a lot. But that's not the main reason why it sold for so much money. The main reason why it sold for $408,000 is one, this coin graded very highly, but mainly this coin was accidentally struck on a zinc coated steel planchet. So your 1944 penny should not look like this whatsoever. If it does, you have a transitional error coin that's worth a lot of money and you want to make sure you contact a rare coin expert immediately because you have something that's very rare or unfortunately it might be fake. But do your homework and research before you ever sell your coin. Take care guys. It's important to know also that YouTube has a very complex algorithm that knows exactly what you want to watch and that video is on the screen. Are they right? Click on that video and I'll see you inside.